Welcome to Corinne's Picks, a show that explores the world of art, works of art, and the careers of remarkable artists. Today we're going to be looking at this phenomenon called AI. I'm your host, Corinne Basabe. Today we have with us Don Perlis. He's a prominent artist. His work has been featured in the New York Times, Art in America. He's been seen, shown at the Whitney Museum, the Brooklyn Museum, and the National Gallery in, in Poland. Thank you for being on the show, Don. Oh, thank you, Corinne. Happy to be now, here. Now, AI has been covered extensively the last few months in the media, and a lot of artists, you know, it's, it's really created a lot of controversy among artists. Can you tell me what your perception of AI is? Yeah, well, if you don't mind, I, I can, uh, I'd have to give some background in okay, order to be right. understood, I think, okay, because okay. Uh, I was born in, uh, or d during World War II, you know, so uh, when I went to art school, um, photography was not considered, even photography was not considered an, an art. Uh, it was considered a craft, and there was no photography ar um, section in the, uh, in the, say, in the New York Times. There was a separate photography section. And um, when I went to art school, um, it was considered cheating to copy a photograph for the use, uh, for, for, for even for reference in making paintings. So I, I developed a bias from my early age, just from being my head having my head pounded in by teachers. Um, we had to learn how to draw. We had to learn how to conceptualize the figure uh, without reference. We had to learn anatomy. We had to learn perspective. Uh, basically, we had to construct what later became very sophisticated photographs uh, manually, but they had to actually be better than photographs. Um, so uh, that's where I'm coming from, except that uh, I'm not that young anymore and um, have been around while photography has developed and has been considered an art. And so my views have changed considerably, of course. Um, so I do have ideas about AI and, and, and photography, but, uh, uh, you know, like I say, I must... I, I don't come from a place that considered photography an art, although now that now I do somewhat in the hands of good photographers. You know, AI is here to stay, right? And mm -hmm. it's influencing um, the world of advertising, graphic design, a job that would have normally gone to um, a graphic artist would can now be given to the you know what are the AI programs that that's popular is called Mid Journey, right? It can be give you can log into Mid Journey, um, type in four words, and basically create the the ad, the cover of a of a magazine, of an album cover, mm -hmm. um, posters, mm -hmm. and it would look exactly like something that a graphic designer <laughs> spent hours and hours and hours doing. Yeah, well, it's not going to make. Uh, graphic designers or illustrators are very happy with this, but uh, might even put them out of work because uh, photography actually initially put um, American illustration was was in a kind of a high point in the mm -hmm. '60s, and um, it even it even had artists who were not well known now who were well known then uh, in the field and produced illustrations that were derived from fine art. Mm -hmm. And it was all blasted out of the water by um, by photography, mm -hmm. which totally took over in the late '60s. And um, so, it's unpredictable where this might go. But the te technology has a tremendous influence on uh, everything. So, it well, does, you know, I, I think it's you're probably right. It's opened the door to conversations about copyright mm -hmm. licensing. Mm -hmm. um, I want to before we get any further, I want to show some images that were created by my husband, um, Xavier Basabe, Javier Basabe, yeah. by um, just typing in a few words in the computer. He didn't pick up a paintbrush. I mean, he absolutely just, type, literally, just typed in maybe four words as a prompt and the, the computer generated these images. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the first image. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this image, he did help the computer by uploading an image of himself, which looks nothing like this, nothing like this, but this is what was created. Um, 
-hmm. So a lot of people, um, including myself, have been seeing AI and, and Facebook. And it, somebody actually had to tell me that this was made by a computer. It is astonishing. And, um, you know, my, fir my first reaction to seeing it is that, uh, first of all, I, before I say that, I, I know Javier um, Basabi is a very fine painter. So the fact that he could take four words and do this is very <laughs> impressive to me, <laughs> just off the top. But um, it looks like a very high definition photograph, uh, but it, it also has something creepy about it in that it, it looks more immobile th uh, than a human being would be. Uh, it looks like the camera was so fast that it caught a fraction of a fraction of a second uh, in in that uh, images of a human, I don't know what you call it, a uh, image of a human being, um, in their emotional uh, thought process. And it even looks like it's thinking, actually, you know, if you look at it. Could I have the next image, please? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that could be, you know, the same guy sitting in front of um, a screen. So, um, you know, very easily. So I would, I would have almost the same reaction to it because the screen looks like it could be made out of silk. You know, it, it could look like it's an actual form rather than just something that was generated. Um, even the light seems correct. It looks like a, a photographer went to a lot of trouble. You know, there's a spot on the top of the head, the light's coming from uh, the viewer's left. Uh, you know, in a very kind of controlled way. And um, I would think if I saw this without knowing anything that it was just a very good digital photograph of, of somebody. So what happens with the, um, you create a account with these different um, AI sites, right? And the computer has thousands and thousands of images from the World Wide Web. And so when you put in those prompts, it takes, like, for example, you could say, I want it to be in the style of Salvador Dali, or you could say, I w want it to be in this style of, you know, you know, Frida Kahlo. Mm -hmm. And you want, or you could say you want it to be slightly creepy or whatever, and it literally will create that mood and that feeling. And... You know, this, it raises a lot of questions, and even in terms of um, co copyright and license, and um, who yeah. owns the image? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a problem actually, because even in real life, uh, I remember making a painting once. Of, of um, uh, it, it was an, it was kind of a derived from a book uh, about uh, from by, by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and it was about. Um, Love in the Time of Cholera, and um, it was a painting of, uh, of this guy in a brothel, uh, and they were both in bed, and, mm -hmm. and um, it was comic, actually, and it was this, and um, so uh, I have this very frail looking kind of guy in, um, on top of this enormous woman. I mean, it wasn't obscene in any way or shape or form, but it was, it was just humorous, and uh, and then I was in the subway, and, I, and there was a, film, a movie that was publicized from Hollywood, and um, there was a very similar image that I saw on the screen, I mean, on the, uh, on the movie poster. So um, I thought, well, they couldn't have made that poster without, without seeing my painting. And I, I uh, called up a lawyer and, and sent, him an Im sent him an image, and he says, well, it's not it's not close enough. It okay. would have been, it would have had to be extremely explicit. So, but I think that there's also a lot of uh, controversy in those, in each particular case, you know, in that, in other words, how specific it is, how much, uh, you know, you're talking about perjury or not perjury or something. But well, there are lawsuits because, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm a painter myself, as you know. Yes, and yes. People who know me and have seen my paintings over a period of time, can I say, so, okay, that looks like something you did, right? Because you yeah, have a you have yeah. a specific yeah. um, 
you know, I guess blueprint or style that you develop. And for a computer to take that style, they're taking a little bit of your intellectual property. I mean, I actually, you know, being devil's advocate, but I actually love AI. I mean, I love the yeah. images I'm seeing, yeah. but it would be kind of disturbing if I spent, you know, 20 years doing a certain, certain specific thing that's unique to me, if I see it being produced yeah. by other people yeah. on, you know, on the internet. Sure, like a certain kind of a stroke or... Right, there's certain things that are specific very, to an very artist. Very personal right, to the artist. That yeah. looks like that artist. Yeah. Like Basquiat. Of course, sure, sure. Sure, and, and uh, AI would actually have go to town with him, I think, because you know, they could. Uh, I mean, there are art, there are there are there are professional painters who have spent their lives copying styles, and you can't tell the difference when sometimes when they make exactly. something, you know, like a, a Miro painting or exactly. a, or a Mondrian. It's you know they make images, that, and even Corot, if you go back in history, had a history of people who forged him. Uh, forgery is a high, it's kind of a high art form, including that guy who did Vermeer in the Second World War, which his paintings don't look anything like Vermeer. But um, I, I, I myself w would have a hard time loving any particular mm -hmm. technology. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. so the only technology I love is, mm -hmm. is my hand with a brush in it, you know, I like, because I like the activity of it. But um, so I think if I fell in love with AI, it would be like you are, I w it would have to be falling in love with a particular image. Exactly. And I don't think I've seen enough of it t to uh, feel okay. like that. Although, um, yeah, yeah, I'd love yeah. to see the next image. Yeah. Yeah, that's more, yeah, that's, is that an AI? That's uh, AI. That's with AI. With a person behind? Yep, that's that the incredible. person behind is AI too. That's why I, I think it's so remarkable. I mean, I love the feel yeah, of this image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's something wrong with the anatomy of that arm. Well, the thing is, too, AI has the reason. The way you can tell an AI image is that sometimes they have more than five fingers, one hand. They haven't been able to get the fingers correct. Yeah, I think the lower arm in that image is right, actually right. is actually it's actually out of sync with the uh, with the upper part of the arm. I mean, it's not perfect. It's just, it sticks it, out too far. It's, it's not it's, perfect it's, yet. Yeah. Um, and also the the right hand side of of your head the one with shadow looks skewed mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. it looks like it looks a little skewed and the lighting doesn't look authentic because of the light behind it so um it's it's not as convincing as the last image okay. the cat was... looks completely artificial <laughs> looks like a cartoon cat that is a very strange image so can we see the next one it's almost a, like a painting that one yeah it's like a like a mistakes with painting um what do you think of this one? Um. Okay, okay, here's an example of AI not being perfect. Look, count how many fingers are on their hands. Oh my goodness gracious. How many, how many fingers do they have? Well, the man's got an enormous amount of fingers. <laughs> I can't even, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> the woman has got one, two, three, four, five, six. My goodness, you know. But I love, the, you know, they say that these images are flat, but I feel like these images have a lot of feeling. I think, I mean, I love that painting, even though it has too many hands. I love these images that I'm seeing with AI. I mean, I, I can't get addicted to it because I like to paint. I can paint. I don't need a computer to help me paint. Yeah. But I'm enjoying what other people are doing. Sure, sure. In this image, it looks like, like the man is interested in the ring. And the woman is interested in herself, perhaps. actually, rather than, yeah, you know, rather than him being interested in her when he's looking at the ring. So I find that there's a kind of a disconnect in the, in the emotion. But I love the head wrap. And I mean, who yeah, picked, yeah, I the could, AI picked sure. out the clothing for them sure. and the lighting. I just think it's just wonderful. I think I, I actually agree. And I think it's really nice. You know, actually, I think. Can we have the next image? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, this image huh. is actually one of mine um, yeah, yeah. that I did in Photoshop. I, oh. I used a black marker and drew the cartoon, and then I imported it into Photoshop and added the colors. 
So I asked my husband to upload this to the AI to see what a mixture between myself and the computer would produce. So it produced the next image. Well, this image for me has a problem because the, you know, it looks like her arm has been amputated. Oh, she's, she's, I'm she's, not talking she's, about both arms. Just she's, she's on the beach. That's why. Oh, she's in the water. There's well, water with fish, right? Yeah. So if yeah. yeah, so if the fish were more evident, which it wasn't right. on the smaller image, right? But uh, you don't get that it's water right away. You just get a blue kind of right. like color. But so actually, it is water because I yeah. cut and paste actual w water from the ocean um, yeah. onto it. I think maybe the line underneath the arm. Maybe that makes could be it, it makes it look like it's cut. That, that could be it. But somehow the and also the, the her left arm looks like it's too high for the water, so Maybe. It, it it looks like it's hanging there in the air. Maybe. And then when you get the close up, it looks like the lines underneath the arms are cut because there's a line there. But let's look at the next image because I want you to see what AI did to this. That's what? AI's interpretation. Gee. Yeah, that looks like it's in the water because of the reflection. But that's that that. This is what AI came up with as a result of seeing the other one. Yeah, so this definitely, look, to me, looks like a combination of a painting that was done from photography. It looks like a painting that was done from photography to me. And, and parts of the painting were, I guess, for lack of another word, abstracted or designed differently. And then. So how does AI affect the art market? How do you think it will, it will affect the art market in terms of I mean, if you're spending so much time doing your paintings and these paintings come to market, what should be the economic outcome of this? I was thinking, for, you know, about this, and a funny thought came to my mind when I was over, coming over here, which is that there possibly could be a Leonardo da Vinci of AI who hasn't been born yet, you know, because you can't predict that. And, and um, he might be able to do stuff with it that you can't even predict. It would have to be, actually, in fact. Um, how to price it is a problem. I mean, actually, if you look at ordinary NFTs, they're, they're not as priced as highly as the original. So I'm assuming it, the same thing with... But at least the, the NFT yeah. has to be created by a human. I mean, a human created every aspect of that M mm -hmm. um, NFT. The NFT is just a, matter, a, a method of saving the file. It's a digital file. Um, this is like has no human touch to it. Um, but yeah. we're going to take a, a commercial break, and we'll be back in, in a couple seconds. Okay. 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 Most hiring algorithms would scream me out. Some bosses couldn't see me as a leader. I've run this place for 20 years, but I still need to prove that I'm more than what you see on paper. I've been running code. As long as I've been able to reach a keyboard. This is what I do. It's second nature for me, coordinating a hundred details at once. It's the way my mind works. I have a very mechanical brain. I sold them on my skills. You gotta be so good they can't ignore you. My magic is analytics and empathy. That's how I'm getting clients. You have to have the confidence in yourself to show up and defy the odds. I'm more than who I am on paper. I never got a college degree, and today I'm the CEO of my own company. People want to tell me I'm one in a million when actually I'm one of millions. The stars are all around us. It's time for them to shine. Ever hear the one about the frog? Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. Here's my resume. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. It's a lie. But as a metaphor for us and all that we go through as veterans, Experience. It's a story that rings true. We make excuses for how we feel. We push everything down. We tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water, to disconnect. And some days, maybe, it is. But you've never been interested in easy. Reaching out is hard. Do it anyway. You're not alone. You've got this. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. Hey, boss. You okay? You said I'm fine.
with the frosted Super mix, but it wasn't on it And we lost it You can talk to me It's been really, really hard for me Welcome back to Corinne's Picks. I'm your host, Corinne Basabe. We've been talking about AI. Uh, when we came back, when we um, went to break, we were talking about the financial repercussions of having AI in the marketplace. So I'm sorry, uh, could you continue with that train of thought? Yeah, well, my, my reaction is that it's not an art problem, it's a marketing problem. And the art world has been very facile about marketing anything. Um, you know, some guy put his own excrement in a can mm -hmm. in the 50s or late, early 60s, mm -hmm. you know, and they were able to market it. Uh, now people are, you know, walking on their stomachs from Wall Street to 42nd Street and, and filming it, and it's, and it's marketed highly. So, um, so it's a marketing, actually a marketing problem. It's, it's not the problem for the individual artists, except the one who's going to either profit by it or else be squeezed out, actually. But my thoughts are is that um, if like you know what they say um, part of ownership is like mostly pos possession is what ninety something percent of ownership. I think that if something has my my um, my brand on it, something that's uniquely Corinne Basabe's, mm -hmm. um, because there is AI in the marketplace that can be. It's beautiful, I love it, and it can be created by a computer. When I take that pen and pencil and even do a doodle, I could do a little tiny doodle of a cat. Mm -hmm. To me, it's more um, valuable because it's, it's uniquely my imprint on it. I did it. Mm -hmm. The same way if Picasso spits on the floor, that somebody will carve out that piece of floor, that floor becomes more valuable, or Banksy, Mm -hmm. There's a scribble on the wall. People are taking machinery to to um, get that piece of concrete. So um, anyway, so let's talk more about the experience of your experience of art. Because I know that you, um, even though we're talking about artificial intelligence, I know that um, let's talk about how you experience art and your current um, project, which has to do with Zadok Williams. Can you explain a little bit about that? And can we see the, the image in split screen when he talks about it? No, image number eight. Sorry. Okay, can you, can you tell us a little bit of um, history behind this painting? Oh, yes. Um, well, this young man was actually um, shot and killed indirectly by the police and um, it was about probably now about a year and a half ago it happened or maybe two years even you know and um, his sister called me up and told me that they had seen uh, my painting of uh, George Floyd being assaulted on billboards around the country and on the media, which it was, of course, it was broadly covered. And they were not able to get coverage for their situation for a number of reasons. And would I do a painting that could be used the same way my painting of George Floyd was uh, on, a bill, on, a, on a billboard campaign um, that would be able to um, influence people to bring justice to what happened uh, to, to the, her brother and the family's son. And what had happened to him is that uh, um, this young man was, um, first of all, he had, he had some mental problems, but um, he was uh, not dangerous and very positive person. I understand that he helped his one sister go through law school, another go through med school. And uh, he was, seen outside of his house uh, doing some work and a policeman asked him or, uh, or a neighbor saw him and thought that it was an intruder and called the police. Um, and the police came and um, instead of interviewing the, 
the guy in a kind of like reasonable way. They uh, um, they thought they just accepted that he was an intruder, and and um, basically what happened is that they shot him, in, and uh, in his own house, um, and he was trying to block the door from letting them come in, and he was scared silly, and uh, he got shot in the shoulder. They left him there to die and to bleed out, which he did without any medical service. And what happened was that the, um, the, 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 the people who were responsible, the police force who were responsible for this were not indicted or like in the case of George Floyd, they were not res made responsible whatsoever. And it was also completely all the way from the DA down. So they felt that they, the family had been the guy had been murdered, their brother had been murdered, and they wanted to have some justice. And then, and then so I was very willing to help because of what had gone through with the George Floyd. And it was very healthy for all of us on the George Floyd committee to be able to participate in, 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 in the justice that happened afterwards in the trial and everything. So we have two yeah. minutes left. Yeah. Can you tell us, talk about process, since there's oh, yeah. no process yeah. involved really for AI. Yeah. I want the others to know that a pain, what a, this painting really entails and what, what your work and process is like. Well, it's a very different thing from... In two minutes, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very different than putting a couple of words into a computer. I mean, I've got, first of all, I've got to envision, envision uh, uh, like one image that'll, that'll, that'll completely cover the, the, all the agony of everything that happened. So I had to pick an image, and I had to watch the, the body cams for, uh, for a long time and read the articles, the descriptions, until I got an idea, a firm idea in the head of exactly how he was killed. And then I have to make sketches. That takes a while. And then I have to make color sketches. I have to make compositional sketches. And then I have to um, hire models. And then I hire models. And then I've got to get uniforms and props. And, um, and, then, I've got, and then finally, uh, I make studies. And then I've got to work the thing up on a small scale and then I've got to work it up on a large scale in oil paint and that takes months and in this case took about three months of, 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 of daily work. Okay, so we yeah. unfortunately we've run out of time. I want to thank you for being on Corinne's Picks again. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have your contact information in the credits and definitely um, if people want to learn more about Zadok Williams they should Google Zadok Williams. Um, so thank you. It was wonderful talking about AI. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me, Corinne. Okay, you're welcome. Yeah, nice to be here. I'm a